Welcome to the Meta One Coin Report, exploring the world of private digital currency through the eyes of human rights and empowerment for humanity. Here's your host, Leanne Carroll. Meta One Coin is the world's first appreciating stablecoin backed by gold assets as part of a complete economic ecosystem known as Metanomics. Meta One Coin is created for the purpose of freedom, equity, and honor in commerce. It can be viewed as an agent of change. It is a currency for the enlightened, a currency which signifies freedom and abundance. If you enjoy enlightening and refreshing conversations about sovereignty, equity, and honor, you're in the right place. Justin is joining the podcast today. He's a wealth of knowledge, a gentle spirit with a beautiful heart. He is the producer of Universal Law and also the man behind the press at Meta One. He shares his perspective of how humanity can be uplifted in a world of apparent chaos. Justin beautifully describes human potential and how we can collectively create the world we want not only for ourselves and our family, but for all of humanity and the earth. Please join me in welcoming Justin to the podcast. Hey, what's up? It's great to be here. I'm excited about this. I am excited too. I love having bantering conversations with you. (laughs) Me too. There are so many topics to talk about, and I wanted to tell, share with you and get your opinion on a subject that I just really found out about, and that is ransomware. And oh, yeah. I didn't realize how many companies were assaulted by ransomware, and, mm-hmm. you know, and then I, when looking into it, the c- c- companies really don't get their, their data back after paying the ransom. Because the the malware ends up destroying everything. What do you know about? And and then we can talk about the the most recent publicized ransomware incident, which has to do with the pipeline and the the recovery of the ransom. I kind of think it's funny, to be honest. (laughs) Like, I just... You know, I just wonder how much of, of this stuff actually happens and is not an inside job. Um, to first to start off with and and also I think it also brings up some interesting topics to talk about in the in the cryptocurrency industry industry around security um, and what coins are doing about it I know what meta one's doing about it but um, you know it's it's definitely an interesting topic to talk about um, and I think it's another uh, just another example of um, you know, sort of the 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 uh, the energetic of the world that we live in, uh, in terms of you know how people um, interact with each other and sort of this desperate energy um, that is felt. Because if you think about it, you know what is the energy behind that? Why why is either if you come from it at it from a this is a this is actually real or you come from it from a this is an inside job you know what is the energy behind that what is that um sort of news word news um piece of information giving off in terms of the energetic structure and i feel like it's a very low energetic you know it's an energy of well it's okay to steal it's okay to um you know sort of um go to these desperate measures. And I think it's a reflection of the world's um, sort of illusion of this false uh, financial system in a way. Those are really good points. And I like how you brought it into the energetic, how there's this frenzy, how there's Mm -hmm. a way of, if I can't get something that I'm going to take from someone else, there's, I think the whole idea of lack and the whole panic is just wrenching up. And where do you think it's going? Well, I like to have an optimistic view. Um, I really feel like there are many, many people awake, many, many people waking up every single day to the realities of the matrix that we live in. And I really am, I I feel that we're going to be coming to a point 
in which, uh, you know, there's going to be more and more events that are going to happen. They're going to be a catalyst for people waking up that are going to get more and more extreme until everyone is awake. And then really at that point, I feel like it's just a, it's just a um, question of unifying everyone. And, uh, you know, how does that happen? I, I don't think that happens through the mind. I think it happens through the heart. Very good. I agree. I agree. And I do see it as a catalyst for, it's almost like at, at some point we're going to have to stop and look around, look at our neighbor and say, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. And why are we doing this? And yep. This is not me. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> But bringing that, the the ransomware idea back into the crypto space, a lot of ransom is being requested in Bitcoin. Yes. Yeah. And um, a a lot of the the money paid out is being recovered too. Which is interesting (laughs) to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's... uh, you know, that's a, it's, a, a, it's kind of, you know, I mean, everyone knows about the ransomware, at least everyone probably is aware of the the last one that happened with some oil company, right? Which honestly, I don't, I don't feel bad for the oil company. That's a dirty, disgusting business to begin with. But, you know, the, this idea of that the FBI was able to recover the whatever a couple of million dollars in Bitcoin, you kind of ask yourself, you're like, hmm. Now, Bitcoin's supposed to be this like anonymized, secure, you know, way of transacting and the FBI can just pull it back. Um, and of course they can. I mean, you know, that's that doesn't surprise me whatsoever. You know, Bitcoin is Bitcoin, but that doesn't mean that every single cryptocurrency out there is vulnerable to that and so on and so forth. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Meta One has been so adamant about security and is um, has on our roadmap for the beginning of next year to um, uh, to be able to integrate quantum uh, proof keys. And I'm not an expert on this. Robert is more of the expert, but I can tell you that um, you know one of the biggest issues that we face is quantum computing, and uh, you know any and <laughs> a quantum computer can basically hack any any classical computer based password on the planet in three set in three nanoseconds so being able to integrate um basically quantum proof keys which means the pass key or the key to your wallet is actually quantum proof um is uh something that is really important and um so that I know of, there's no other cryptocurrency that's doing that right now. So, um, but I think it's a question for the entire, the entire cryptocurrency space. I mean, um, you know, we're talking about Ethereum 2.0 blockchain that, that's about to come out um, in a few months here. And they say that they've apparently done some, you know, pretty significant security updates. Um, but it's an interesting topic to, to discuss because you know, really that is, that is a question when we're creating a new financial system, a new ecosphere, a new way to transact. That's one of freedom. You know, it's like, how do we, um, how do we protect ourselves? How do we make sure that, uh, you know, the, the boys in, in Washington cannot, uh, just pull our $2.3 million back. <laughs> right. You know, Meta One is also built on equity and honor, not only mm-hmm. privacy and trust, but equity and honor. Yeah. So it's it's not a place for criminals and it's not a place for criminal intent. Oh, for sure. Absolutely not. No, I don't think uh, I don't think criminal could hang out in Meta One world. They, they get blasted by the energy. <laughs> I think so, too. Yeah, <laughs> we've seen it happen. Yes. So a lot of people don't have bank accounts because they don't like the energy of the banks and Mm -hmm. they're sort of a class called the unbanked. And (laughs) and one thing that the crypto space is doing is assisting them in being able to transact peer to peer easily and and conveniently with um, exchanges. Let's talk about the unbanked and how um, Meta One can assist those that 
don't want to participate in the dirty energy monetary system, how they can join Meta One and um, transact with equity and honor and um, with, with clean economic energy. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the problem, right? I mean, we all probably know a little bit about the banking system, even if you don't know what's actually going on behind the scenes. We all know that it's um, annoying, to say the least, um, uh, very criminal. Um, and there's uh, just, it's really, it's a terrible system. Um, and it's run by really terrible people. And uh it's, uh, I just think people have gotten sick and tired of dealing with traditional banks. I mean, I think even mainstream people, I mean, we all have a, you know, annoying bank, a few annoying bank stories. I'm sure you have a few too. Uh, you're telling me a few of them before we got on the air here. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's just a hassle. It's really frustrating. Um, you know, and we're even seeing it with traditional banking when it comes to the cryptocurrency world. I mean, if you ha hop on to some of these larger, um, more popular exchanges, the exchange will hold your money for six to eight days when you deposit fiat before you can even trade or, or purchase any crypto, which is crazy, you know, and they, they make up some, some, you know, ridiculous thing about administrative hold and so on and so forth. But what they're doing is they're taking that money and they're trading with it and they're making money and then they're giving it back to you in six weeks, six days is the same thing that all of the traditional banks do when they hold their, your checks and things like that. I mean, I, I had a, I had a check that I deposited. It was a, it was a larger amount of a check and um, the bank told me that they were going to hold it for 15 days and you know i was just like are you kidding me you know you know i can go to the bank across the street another bank that i bank at and they're going to um they'll hold you know they'll probably put it on hold for three days and this bank's policy was over a certain amount we're holding for 15 days and you know it's just I, I, the whole system is built on take 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 and pulling people's energy you know of how, how much more can I take from you? What else can I, you know, how much more control can I have over you? And so that's the beautiful thing about cryptocurrency. I think that people don't, a lot of people don't realize um, that maybe have never explored cryptocurrency or, um, you know, have uh, very little knowledge about cryptocurrency is it's peer to peer. I mean, we don't, we, we're completely taking the bank out of the equation. So let me tell you how you can set up your own bank. I mean, you literally can buy Meta One, you can, you can exchange on the Meta Exchange, and then you can have a wallet with all of your coins in it, Meta One, any other cryptocurrency that you want, like, um, you know, the supported ones that we have now are ETH, BTC, uh, Binance coin, EOS, and Litecoin. And then later this year, our Meta um, debit card is going to be debuting. And that is a instant crypto to fiat conversion card. So that means that you can walk into your local grocery store, buy your groceries and swipe your card and your crypto will be instantly converted into a fiat. And then, then we will automatically pay the merchant, whoever you're paying. And the card is a, is a sort of Visa MasterCard uh, like program that is basically going to be accepted wherever um, those large uh, credit card processors are accepted. And so you've got your own bank. You can, transact with people so you know these days i'm sure leanne you use like cash app or venmo or something like that right all the time I do. yeah everybody does you know that's how most people transact on a regular basis unless you're going to a merchant right well you can do the same thing with cryptocurrency you can have a wallet and you can send crypto from you to somebody else really, really simply. And if you have the meta debit card, there's no reason to wait the day or two that you have to wait to deposit, to withdraw your money from the cash app to your account or from Ven Venmo to your account. All you got to do is swipe your debit card somewhere or go to the ATM and take out cash. And 
you've completely become unbanked. And how much freedom would you have then? And, you know, you're not discriminated against because I feel like the majority of people, if you ask the majority of people out there, I bet you that eight out of 10 of them would have some kind of bank story that that the bank showed them prejudice. Because that just seems to be the way it is. It's just like you and Robert were talking about last show. It's this, this continued scrutiny. You know, it's like, what are you doing with this money? Where is it going? Uh, you know, how many children do you have? What's your pet's name? <laughs> you know, it's just, it's this crazy perpetual system. And then you get it. And then don't even, don't even get started on the fees and all of those different things that you have to end up paying for these services that you don't really even need. Um, and so... It's a really exciting time. It's a really exciting world to be breaking into because then we can really start talking about freedom. We can really start talking about being able to transact in equity with honor and in a free manner without having to deal with this restrictive nature of the system that we have been so conditioned and programmed to use. I know that people that listen to this podcast and and other types of information know that they don't actually own their bank accounts. They don't actually own the money that's in it and they actually don't own themselves, but you completely own your meta wallet. You completely own yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And you know, it's, um, it's just a beautiful way to live. I mean, is it, uh, it, does it take a little bit of, uh, is there a learning curve? Does it take a little bit of time to sort of transition into you know, like being, you know, very, um, you know, used to living in that way? Absolutely. But I, you know, I, even without uh, these uh, facilities and tools that Meta One is currently pr- pr- developing is going to be unveiling soon. Um, you know, I know people who have been, who literally just use crypto all the time and they've been doing that for more than a few months years you know and it is very possible and even in the mainstream these days you you can see the technology and i think there's uh, you know i don't think meta one is amazing and i definitely think that we have a complete solution but there's also a lot of really incredible technology that's come out of the cryptocurrency industry i mean you look at a company kind of like you trust um, which you trust is basically uh, the PayPal of the crypto world. Um, the, you can accept pay, uh, cryptocurrency at your, at, at your store for your business. And then they actually have a service that automatically um, you know, converts it from crypto to fiat if you want, or you can just keep the crypto. Um, and I think technologies like that are just going to grow and grow and grow and grow, you know, to a point where, you know, I mean, Look at, you know, look at Tesla and Elon Musk. I mean, Elon Musk tweets once and the whole industry goes crazy. And, you know, he's, he's pulled away from Bitcoin because of the, um, did you hear about this? That he, he tweeted um, uh, because, you know, of the environmental impact that Bitcoin has um, because of the mining. Um, and so uh, Tesla for a while was, um, taking Bitcoin for their for their products for their cars and things like that, and they're no longer going to do that. And so now everyone's speculating on what the coin is that that Tesla is going to take next. Um, some some people think it's XRP. Some think people think it's Dogecoin because he's really obsessed with that. Even though I don't think he would do that. And that that coin's a, it's 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 a joke. I mean, it started as a joke. <laughs> For the investors that are invested in it now, it's probably not a joke anymore. But, um, you know, it's interesting. It's, it's, an interesting uh, it's an interesting time and it's exciting time. And I think that, um, you know, collaboration is beautiful. I think that we can really come together, put all of these minds together and come up with some pretty incredible stuff. Um, that can help to to liberate people and um, free people from, you know, the, the the financial system, which is really built on slavery. It's built on debt. It's a system that is literally built on debt. Um, that's all 
smoke and mirrors and magic. <laughs> yeah, it's the the wizard behind the curtain that the that the little dog exposes. Yes, for sure, a hundred percent. It absolutely is that way. I mean, if you even look at the way that the money is created, you know, um, you know, if you read Modern Money Me- Mechanics, it's a um, publication that was put out by the U.S. Treasury a long time ago, in um, the Fed. Uh, it's uh, it's crazy. I mean, they literally make it out of thin air. But what people don't know is they make it off of. They really make it off of us, you know, because there's no other. Um, there's no other real value in this world than human beings. So no credit, no uh, debt instruments like the U.S. dollar cannot be created until a living, breathing human being like you or me signs a piece of paper. And then that piece of paper is actually the catalyst for creating dollars. So when the Fed is printing money, they are printing it based off of the credit, the full faith and credit of the United States of America. And what is the full faith and credit of the United States of America? The people. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a simple concept. It's a very scary concept, but um, it's one that is the reality of the financial system. And, you know, it's, it's, we've all been hoodwinked into, into thinking that this is also the only way um, to be able to, to transact and use these, these corrupt, um, you know, situations. Like you were talking about the, the Wells Fargo, the, how many Wells Fargo scandals have we had, you know, over, over a couple of decades? And have you seen in America, I mean, I feel like, this is something that is very prevalent in this country, this cognitive dissidence, where like you'll have a Wells Fargo story where they like literally then criminal actions right in your face. Like we're creating fake accounts and we're using those fake accounts to make our books look better. And you kind of ask yourself, you're like, how do these people get away with this stuff? You know, and it's like if I went out and I created a bunch of fake checks with a bunch of federal routing numbers on them and tried to cash them, like I'd be in prison right now. I wouldn't do that, but I would be in prison. It's the same thing as what they're doing, you know? And so, you know, uh, what, what do you think that's about? Like this cognitive dissidence that we see where we have people, you know, it's like, my question is, why didn't America stand up when that happened and says, well, Fargo, this is ridiculous. We're going to do something about this. You know, these people need to be put in prison, like citizens arrest. Let's go to the freaking, you know, CEO's house and, you know, arrest him for this incredible, you know, criminal activity that's happened. But it was kind of like, It came out in the news, everyone was kind of angry, and I think they got fined a couple billion dollars, which is nothing for them, and then life moved on, and people still use Wells Fargo. (laughs) It is incredible, and that's true with government actions. It's it's true across the board, and Mm -hmm. why do people still think that that's the real system, and it's the system that is good? (laughs) <laughs> if, even if you look at the reporting of re, uh, cryptocurrencies, it's like the crypto bad, traditional banks good. Yes. And, you know, they try to invert the conversation to make it look like the cryptocurrencies are the, the criminals. Yep. I, I find that really interesting, which kind of brings me to the, the media coverage of the Bitcoin conference that happened in Miami, the first of let's see, June 4th and 5th. They made it sound like it was a um, a bonanza. They made it they like the Woodstock of Bitcoin, mm-hmm. and th- they turned it into this big COVID factory. Everybody went home sick. <laughs> Nobody wore a mask. People were hugging each other. People were laughing and exchanging and touching touching each other. And um, so they they completely didn't even see the value of, of the enthusiasm for 
cryptocurrency and what it means and what how it can expand our economy and all the good that can come from it. It's the only thing that I could see was um, how it, it spread COVID. Mm. Yeah, that is. I, th- I think all the lead. Um, neat, um, I did a search on it, and the leading articles were about how it was a um, a COVID spreading event, super spreader. Well, you know, just just your point before, right? With cryptocurrency or anything like that, there's always a narrative. The narrative is always something that is predetermined and it needs to be followed. And if it's not followed, then heads are going to roll. And that's the way that the mainstream media has been for a very, very long time because it's controlled. And, you know, that's why it's so important for in independent media like a right to know and like the meta one podcast and a lot of other people out there who are actually out there um wanting to report the truth wanting to report the real news because you know uh i think it's time for people to start to hear the truth instead of um you know uh this garbage get that gets put out um, and I think it's happening. You know, I uh, I was actually doing some research the other day and and seeing um, sort of the the number of viewers that um, you know um, networks like CNN have, and 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 that trend is starting to go this way. It's uh, you know there's less Going and south. less people who are watching um, mainstream media, and I think it's really important um, because I, I, I'm, I'm a believer of truth. I just think that truth should be shared and then we should be the ones that should be able to make the decision. You know, this comes all the way, it comes back to common law. You know, it's like the, 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 the foundational legal principle, the maximum of law that was, that this country was built on by the founders. It was built on you can do whatever you want as long as you're not harming property or harming other human beings. And, and that's the way it should be. That's why, honestly, I, I know where that conference was. It was in Miami. And I love the state of Florida because there are uh, people in that state that are in um, statutory um, positions of power that, are actually, that actually still believe in freedom. And they are giving people the opportunity to, you know, to, to, to make a choice, you know, and we can have, you know, the conversation about COVID can go on forever and ever. And I think that, every, but I, at the end of the day, for me, what it's about is it's about freedom. It's about the freedom of choice. Okay. You can tell me, CDC, we recommend this, we recommend that. That's fine. They're recommendations. Great. I, you rec- here's the data. We recommend that you wear a mask. Well, I can go out and do my own research. I can go out and make my own decision. And then if I want to put a mask on when I'm going into a business, then I will do that. But if I don't want to, I shouldn't be discriminated against because I'm not wearing a mask. And, you know, go ahead. Oh, I just um, always have to put, put this in there. The CDC owns the patents on all of these vaccines that they recommend. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's like the, the, the Fed and the money system owns the patent for the money that they want you to use. That's why they recommend yeah. it. It's all the same. Yeah. In the news, sure. they all <laughs> they recommend it. But here's the thing is that if you, so one of the things that, you know, we, one of the first principles that we teach in the secured party class, party um, creditor 101 class in the university, uh, universal law Academy is about the commercial system. We, we live and breathe in a commercial system. Everything is commerce. So think about this, this way, the CDC is a corporation. It's a for-profit corporation. It is recommending one of its one of its uh, um, let's say partners. It's recommending one of its partners' product, the pharmaceutical company, the you know whatever AstraZeneca uh, vaccine or whatever it is. You have a choice if you're going to use that product or you're not going to use that product. That's it. And if we stop using the product, then these companies aren't even going to exist. 
What What about the states that um, force them? <clears throat> like in Texas, you can exempt yourself, but say Pennsylvania, you can't. You You can actually get thrown in jail. For is is that true? I don't know about jail. I have no idea. You can be fined or something. That wouldn't surprise me though, because that's the that's the you know that you're getting into the Northeast and there's lots of um, there, there's lots of um, uh, uh, local governments up there that like to practice socialism and communism, communist type ways. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of places like that. I mean, I've done some traveling recently, and you know, um, you know, even outside of the United States, it's, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I I lived in Florida for a while, and you know, Florida is a special place. <laughs> it really is. Um, but I think there's a, you know, there's a f- more and more people are waking up. I feel like, and. Um, you know, in terms of that question around, you know, these other states that are locking down or sort of whatever, um, you know, what do you do around that? Uh, well, you become a secured party, you get yourself out of the system, and then, um, you know, you're able to, you have access to commercial administrative remedies to be able to deal with someone who's um, harassing you or uh, violating your rights um, to, you know, in wearing a mask. Yeah, I was thinking about that traveling at the airport. Let's kind of expand on the idea of every time you engage in commerce, you're in, engaging in contracts. Yeah, um, contract law is really, really, really important. It's the foundation of how everything works. Uh, I believe that it's the foundation of how the universe works um, because we are contracting on the uh, physical level, but we also contract on a spiritual level. We make contracts before we come to this planet uh, to do certain things in certain lifetimes, or at least try to achieve them. Uh, we make um, you know contracts all day long, um, and it's really important. It's not it's not only important for uh, like a three D world legal growth and being able freedom, but it's important on a spiritual level as well. Um, But yes, um, what people don't understand is there's two, uh, there's two sort of types of contracts. There's an express contract. Um, and then there is a, uh, a nonverbal or non-written contract. Um, and so you don't have to have a piece of paper like a contract for a mortgage or a car loan to have a contract. You simply have to have an agreement between two parties or more than two parties to to have a contract. Um, And that is how each and every one of us um, gets into these, what we call invisible contracts um, from the moment that we come out of our parents, uh, our mother's womb. Um, You know, in the United States, the way that 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 happens is when a baby is born, the first thing that the parents are required to fill out is the birth certificate. And what's happening during that process is actually a commercial process. So the 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 word birth, B I R T H Actually, if you look it up, the root of the word is uh, birth, B-E-A-T-H, which is um, like a birth for a, a vessel or for a ship. So that concept in law comes from uh, admiralty law, which is the law of the sea, um, Admiralty law has a long history. It's obviously started um, way back when, when uh, human beings were first starting to sail on the seas and, and so on, so the actual ocean. But it's the, the sea, when we're talking about the sea, is actually not, uh, today is not talking about the actual ocean. We're talking about a jurisdiction. And in this case, that jurisdiction is the corporate United States of America. So when a 
a person, a human being, sorry, a human being, not a person, is birthed into this world and that, that um, mother signs the birth certificate, there is a commercial process happening in which that um, human is being converted into a corporate entity or a legal fiction. So to break it down even farther, there are two realms uh, uh, of, um, there are two legal realms. One is called the public side, okay? Think about this, you've seen the movie The Matrix, Leanne, yes? Yes. Think about this like the movie The Matrix. So in The Matrix, when uh, Neo and Morpheus are actually inside of The Matrix in their digital bodies, this is the public side. This is uh, the, the place where only paper can exist, only corporate fictions, only uh, artificial persons can exist. The private side is when Neo and Morpheus are outside of the matrix on the Nebuchadnezzar in the real world. So if you've never seen the movie, The Matrix, I'll give you another analogy. Think about the, pro the private side as the human being, flesh and blood, you and me, and think about the public side as a piece of paper, as a Walmart LLC, okay? And so um, all of this starts on the private side. So if we take those two concepts and we talk about the birth certificate process, when a human being is is um, birthed out of the mother's womb, they're a human being. There's no, uh, there's no public side. There's nothing that's attached to them in a corporate manner, legally speaking. But when that mother signs that birth certificate and puts that signature down on paper, basically what she's declaring to the state is through admiralty law, this commercial vessel has been birthed and it has been lost at sea. And I'm not talking about the ocean. I'm talking about it has been lost in the public world in a, on a, in a commercial way. And the state is claiming that vessel lost at sea and claiming control over it and its property. So by signing that birth certificate, unknowingly, of course, that mother has basically signed the rights over to their children to the state. That's why if, you know, some crazy neighbor or somebody, like actually this happened to me when I was a kid, my, um, uh, me and my brothers were sledding down our hill in front of our parents' house and the, there's actually a road at the bottom of the hill. And we used to like to make a jump and we used to jump over the road. Well, one day we're doing this and a car is coming up the road and I land in the middle of the road and the car stops short and almost hits me. And it was our neighbor and our neighbor called Child Protective Services on my mother, which is crazy because my mom's like the best mom in the world. And they came to our, my, our house to do an inspection. That's why these kinds of entities like CPS can do that because the... Um, the minute that that birth certificate is signed, the, uh, the, the mother has created a contract on behalf of the child that is contracted with the state. And if that, uh, you know, if that, that, that uh, mother is not taking care of the state's property, the state can take away that property and can put it into a state, you know, uh, spawn issued orphanage, uh, you know, and foster care system and so on and so forth. So, Contracts are so, so, so important. I'll give you another example of how we contract on an everyday basis. Anytime you go to a restaurant, you go into the restaurant, you sit down, and you open up that menu. The second that you order food and you commit to receiving those benefits of that food for the money that you're going to pay at the end of your meal, 
that is a contract. It's a, it's not an express contract. It's, it's an unwritten contract. It's a, um, but it's, uh, it's a contract. That's why at the end of the meal, if you decide not to pay your bills, then you're either going to get the cops called on you or you're going to have to go in the back and do a bunch of dishes. There so, has to be an exchange. Yeah. There has to be an exchange. Absolutely. hundred percent. Or you're defaulting on that contract. It's, it's, uh, it's a different perspective and it really makes you think about the actions that you take on an everyday basis because we unfortunately have been hoodwinked into contracting with entities and agreeing to things that we really would never agree to. Um, and we call that an unconscionable contract. It's a contract that is really not desirable. And it, they're technically, you know, if you want to, if you want to talk in, in a sort of lawful terms, they're technically not legal because there has not been a disclosure of the, of the terms of the contract in, in a, that specific way. But unfortunately, the system is so corrupt that they don't listen to their own rules. So that really doesn't make a difference. What makes a difference is what you do with the knowledge that you have and do you take the steps to remove those invisible contracts um, and be able to remove yourself from the system. You know, and now think about how powerful this is. You remove yourself from the system, you become unbanked, and you start using a meta wallet and a meta debit card, and you don't have any traditional bank accounts. It's it's a beautiful concept of being able to really truly be free. And that's 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 all that's all that we want to provide to people is that freedom to be able to do whatever you want to do, to be able to follow that common law principle of as long as you're not hurting others or other people's property, you can do whatever the heck it is you want to do. Mm -hmm. And you can go where you're treated best. You can go and, and live yeah. where, yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to get back to what you were saying about the birth certificate. If somebody were listening to this podcast and they have a baby on the way, they go to the hospital and they say, oh, I'm not going to fill out that birth certificate. What happens? Um, it really depends on where you are. Um, unfortunately, uh, most of the time the hospital will actually file one without your consent. Um, I, I know people that that has happened to before. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's really not legal. Um, but a lot of, um, uh, hospitals will do that. Um, and sometimes, uh, as well, you know, they will, uh, if the hospital will also do th criminal things like try to call, you know, child pr protective services on you and things like that. Um, but, you know, there are, there are ways of being able to fight back against that if you are a, uh, if you don't have all these invisible contracts attached to you. Because that's the thing that people don't understand is, um, you know, uh, we're dealing with a corporation that is masquerading as the uh, government of the original Republic of the United States of America. And this corporation has contracted with you through the birth certificate. That's what they've done. And, and then through the social security number and through the, the, the driver's license. So what are you getting in return? Because there always needs to be um, consideration in a contract. Um, and there, there's, there's rights that you receive, right? So, you know, if you are, um, if you are, you know, contracting with a mortgage company to buy a house, you, what you're asking for is you're asking for the bank to get to loan you money to be able to buy your house. And in return, you're giving the, the bank the right to foreclose on you if you don't pay that mortgage. So that, that's the consideration that, that each party is getting. In your contract with the corporate United States, the United States uh, you are basically saying to the United States, I would, will, um, you know, give you my private credit. Remember when we went, when we were talking before about public and private and how when money is created, 
that that private person signs their signature on a piece of paper, and then that's what cre- is creating money on the pro- on the public side. So you're saying yes. I am uh, going to be a surety for you. I am going to be able to create money for you because the United States has a really big problem. They owe all of these international bankers a lot of money. And that money keeps on getting renegotiated and reconstructed. And who are the sureties for that national debt? All of us because of the contracts that we have gone into with these with this corporation. Um, and so when you sign, when that birth certificate is signed, you're basically saying, I'm going to be a surety for you, US corporation, and in return, you are going to give me rights, benefits, and privileges. What are those rights, benefits, and privileges? Those rights, benefits, and privileges are social security, stimulus checks, Um, you know, the right to have a driver's license that is state sanctioned, um, the right to, um, all of these different, all of these different benefits. So what does that come along with that? That contract also comes along with, well, United, United States is saying to you, well, okay, we're going to, you know, happily accept you as a U.S. citizen, as a, as a subject of our corporation, as a sub corporation of, you know, our larger entity, but you have to follow all of our public policies, all those statutory codes and rules. And so when you break and release yourself from these invisible contracts that you are in with the, the U S corporation, then you're returning to a common law, um, a, a original jurisdiction, and you are not, um, you, you know, you don't have to abide by these statutory laws. Now, there's one uh, exception to that. You know, we cannot break common law. That's not, I'm not saying that you can go out there and be a criminal and break into people's houses and kill people and rob people because all of those things are against common law. But what I'm talking about is I'm talking about these ridiculous public policies where there are victimless crime, quote unquote, crimes that happen all the time. You know, like honestly, like, you know, uh, just just things that you when you when you think about the these things and you're just like there's there's no victim when it comes to this you know who is the victim the state you know and what is the state you know it's a mm-hmm. it's a corporation it's the same thing and really what you're talking about is taking the jurisdiction away from the sea away from the the water the mm-hmm. the w in law and taking mm-hmm. it to the l which is the law of the land yes Yes, hundred percent. Law is law is really not that complicated, and it's it, what's uh, uh, this? These public policies and stuff. This is not law. This is it's public policy. It's rules. It's 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 mandates. Uh, this stuff is not real law. Law is very simple, and that's the way that the the founding fathers wanted to set up um, the trust that is the United States Constitution. It's, it, they wanted to make it very simple and based on common law principles. It got really out of control uh, when the corporation came into effect in 1871. And, you know, that's a long story that you can learn about in our secured party creditor course. That's kind of what Meta One is doing is bringing law of the land back, do no harm and transact in honor and in equity yep. and become a, a natural citizen. become a natural human become a natural human yeah yeah because citizen you know and this is you know this rabbit hole is so deep you know you can go into you know the fact that our language has been hijacked as well and really looking at these you know i love opening up the black's law dictionary and you know looking at definitions of words because it will blow your mind what the legal definitions are versus the layman's definitions, but also just even our English language. I mean, Russell J. Gould has talked about this a lot. He's a, you know, an expert on, you know, really syntactical language and speaking, you know, 
perfected English because even English has been corrupted itself. You know, that word citizen is really means subject, you know, and we talk about that. And, and here's the thing about uh, returning to common law in common law, the way that this, this United States of America was set up to begin with is that the power truly comes from the people. We are our own individual kings and queens in our castles, our, our homes, and then we disseminate that power to the states, and then, then the states disseminate their power on behalf of us to the federal government. That's the way it's supposed to work. It doesn't work that way anymore, you know, because that is not what we're, you know, we're not following the constitution anymore. But, um, you know, that's even that, that's why, you know, I have moved completely away from, from talking to uh, about people or saying person, because the word person has many different meanings. It means uh, artificial person, like a corporation. Um, you know, it's, and typically in legal documents, when it's spoken in legal terms, that's what it means. So that's why I really started to choosing to use the word human, because that's what we are. We are humans. You know, we are God in physical form. And when we, you know, like you and Robert were talking about last time, this is about a return to sovereignty. Um, becoming a secured party and returning yourself to uh, that human being on a legal level is the first step in physical sovereignty. You know, it's a first step in, in this physical plane. And then, of course, you know, the journey to spiritual sovereignty is a completely different, you know, protocol and conversation but it really is about that you know this entire system is about removing our sovereignty that's what it's been set up for and so being able to return to that is very important because that's the way that we're going to change this world that's the way that we're going to be able to birth a new earth and, a, and heaven on earth and a place where everyone is sovereign, everyone is free, and everyone leads from their heart. That's beautiful. And that is the world that we want to create. That's I think the that's world the we world are creating. That, right. And, and I think that's what everyone wants. But yeah, they just don't I mean, know like how to do it or absolutely it i've i've been you know i i have i've been blessed i have probably traveled more than me, most human beings have and i have been to many many places and met many many different people and what i all what i see i i really i don't um you know i don't see are you left are you right are you black are you white are you asian are you whatever you know, what I see is what people want is they want to love and be loved and they want to make sure that their family and their friends are taken care of and, you know, they want happiness. That, that, that's what every human being wants, you know, and, you know, we're really not that different. What ends up happening is there are, uh, you know, small groups of people that are, you know, pulling the strings behind these large systems of establishment that have been created in this world that are hoodwinking us, that are the wizard behind the curtain, like you said before, that are, um, you know, telling us to do things that are not good for us, that are the opposite. You know, I always say, my dad, my dad always tells me, whatever you hear in the mainstream news, just reverse it. And that's usually what's really going on. <laughs> or, or the name of a law what a, the um, build back America better law <laughs> it's going to the result of that law is going to be the complete opposite yeah, yeah exactly 100% and so you know it's just about I think it's just about coming together in uni and unity and, you know, meta one is, is, is simply per just providing the tools to be able to um, just have uh, 
humanity explode into its potential, into its true potential. That's really, because honestly, we're not even close to our potential. We haven't even started to tap into our potential. You know, like I was having a conversation with my dad the other day and we were in the car and we were talking about Teslas and, you know, how cool uh, electric cars are, which I think they are interesting. But, you know, I was saying to my dad, I was like, you know, think about this. Our technology has not changed for the, the vehicle that we drive in every single day for a hundred years. A hundred years. That's mind blowing. And, you know, the thing is, is it's not because the technology is not out there. It's because it's being hidden. It's being kept away from us. And, you know, I think about this when, you know, I watch shows like Star Trek or, you know, I, I read about a lot of these different things. I mean, my, my dad ran into a dude in the, in the 80s that was creating like free energy devices and stuff. This stuff has been around forever. But it's like, I always ask myself, where would humans be in our potential and our growth as a, as a, you know, as physical angels on this planet if we didn't have all of these things that have been keeping us, that have been pushing us back? And it's I think, I, yeah. And I feel like this is the time in human history where it's time for us to say no more. This is it, no more. Stand up, we uh, stand back in our power, you know, and say, listen, we're not going to allow this continual manipulation and suppression and darkness to, be, to, to cloud this planet. We're going to spread the light from inside of ourselves all over this globe, we're going to unify and we're going to create a beautiful world in which we can explore. I mean, you know, I was always fascinated with that, with that show Star Trek when I was a kid. I was like, a, a society in which all they do is explore the stars and they're all friends with each other. And it was just like, this is amazing. Like, this is the way the world should be, you know? But it's not only just about the, the, the technology, but it's about the spiritual growth. It's about, I mean, you know, just all of the different things, you know, and I just think people just have to remember how powerful they are and how much they don't need any other uh, external force outside of themselves to tell them what to do or to uh, tell them what to eat or to drink or what to think um, or, you know, anything, you know, we have the power within ourselves to be able to create our own reality. And, you know, it's, um, more important than ever. I mean, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of friends that are, you know, still, you know, sort of not that, that awake. Um, but I feel like the, the energy right now is really pushing people to wake up. Are you feeling that too? Absolutely. And people that I thought would never have ideas that, that are higher than, say, the, the norm or the standard, mm -hmm. they are rising up mm. and yep. understanding more. Yeah, yeah, it is exciting. It it's is really exciting. exciting. Yeah. It, Really exciting. Now, I think that's what this time is all about. And I love how you're saying we're creating a new world and we're creating it based on our hearts and our unity and what we can create knowing who we are and yes, becoming yes. powerful beings. Yes, because the way that we have led our existence for a very long time has been with our mind. And it's really the reverse of the way it's supposed to be. The mind is supposed to be a servant to the heart. And that's where we have to lead from. And that's the entire essence of what Meta One is focusing on doing. Returning, uh, giving the tools to humanity to focus and returning to leading with our hearts. And, you know, I mean, and that's what all of our, you know, that's what all the other beings in the galaxy are waiting for us to do too. That's why they don't want to hang out with us because they're like, you know, y'all are whack. You're like all up in, in this brain, monkey brain all the time. 
doing this crazy stuff, killing each other and all of this craziness when you need to return to, to here. And I feel like people are moving towards that more and more, you know, because when I, when, when I travel and I, I, I'm, I meet and talk with people, 98% of people are really good. They, they really are loving and kind and generous and, you know, they just want a good life. That's all, that's all they want to do, you know, but you know, people need to also at the same time, they need to use their brains and they need to realize that so much of this stuff is an illusion and so much of it's backwards and so much of it is really detrimental to us. If we allow it, that's the thing. I don't really believe that there's any victims in the world. I believe that we all have the choice in every single moment to allow something to happen or not allow something to happen. And, um, you know, that's, that's what, that's what, we're 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 focusing on returning to is for everyone to have that choice in everything and not be told you have to fill out a birth certificate and get into this crazy system and not be told you have to take a vaccine or you have to wear a mask or whatever if you want to do those things great go for it but you know it's like the, the choice needs to be yours free will that's like like a, a universal a maxim of law you know, and it's, 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 it's a, it's a contract. It's a contract that, you know, can't be broken and, and we need to return to that. So. So beautifully spoken. Hmm. Thank you so much for your perspective today, Justin. I love having these conversations with you. Yeah. I love having these conversations with you. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for listening. We, we appreciate that you take the time uh, out of everyone's busy schedule to um, sit down and listen to our conversations. And uh, we really want to hear from you. So if you have any um, you know, suggestions about what you want us to talk about on the podcast or anything like that, you can email press at meta1.io. That's P-R-E-S-S at meta1.io. And, uh, yeah. Much love to everybody. Blessings. Thank you, Justin. I hope this podcast was thought provoking and interesting for you to learn more about Meta One Coin or join the movement. Please visit the website at Meta One.io to learn more about human rights and sovereignty. Please visit number eight, universal law, number eight dot IO. We always appreciate reading your comments. We always love it when you share. You will be receiving more podcasts like this in the future. And until next time, live freely and live abundantly.